in public session. Uh, I want to, the purpose of this part of the meeting is to have an engagement with uh, some of those who made a written submission on the equality, oh, sorry, employment equality, abolition of mandatory retirement age bill 2014. On behalf of the committee, I want to wish you, welcome you all here today and thank you for giving up of your time and for com coming here. Um, I, we, we, I know we are joined by Age Action, the Law Society, representatives of the Irish Senior Citizens Parliament and some, and some members of the public as well. So we'll, we'll actually go through the introductions maybe as we come to people. Um, a number of issues arise. First of all, the, 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 I, I would ask people not to actually respond until I call you because we have a recording system here and we have to give the people a chance to actually activate the microphone. So don't touch any buttons in front of you either. Uh, that will be done automatically uh, by, by the people behind. We have to give them time to do that. Also, if anybody has any mobile phones or anything, please turn them off and I'll put them in airplane mode because they do interfere with the sound recording system. That goes for colleagues here as well, by the way. So please make sure that they're all off. Um, the format of the meeting, I'll invite um, uh, different groups and individuals to make a, st a statement of about five minutes. Try to keep to the five minutes because we have a lot of people here and we, we want to kind of finish at some reasonable hour. So um, around the five minutes. And then we'll have a question and answer session with members on points that arise and maybe interaction between different groups as well to, to have a look at this and see what, what, we, what you th we think of it. Before we begin, I have to draw the attention of witnesses uh, to the situation in relation to privilege. Please note, by virtue of uh, Section 17.2L of the Defamation Act 2009, you are protected by absolute privilege and respective evidence you are to give to the committee. However, if you are directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter and you continue to do so, you are entitled thereafter only to a qualified privilege in respect of the subject matter and in respect of your evidence. You are directed that only evidence to connect with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given and you are asked to respect the parliamentary practice to the effect that, where possible, you should not criticise nor make charges against any person, uh, persons or entity by name or in such a way as to make him, her or it identifiable. Members should also be aware that under the salient rulings of the Chair, members should not comment on, criticise or make charges against a person outside uh, the House or an official by name in such ways to make him or her identifiable. Um, so I think we are ready to begin. So uh, we'll start off, so I think, with uh, age action. Is that right? Yeah. I think you're first on the list. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Morn, are you yes. kicking off with that? Okay. You've got Thank five you. minutes, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Cahirlock, and to, uh, to Deputies McFadden and Ferris and to Senator White. On behalf of Age Action, I would like to thank you for the invitation to come speak with you today. I would like to briefly introduce my colleagues, our Senior Policy Officer, Ms Naomi Feely, and then further to our left, uh, one of our members, Ms Angela Gallagher, whose story was part of the submission to the, to the committee. Mandatory retirement ages, as we argue in our submission, are deeply ageist. They have been permitted for so long as a reflection of the ageism that is still publicly acceptable in Ireland. While some people can't wait to retire and are very eager to do so, there are many others who wish to keep working. There is a large and growing number of workers who realise that with retirement comes a major drop in income, and for those people, the longer they work, the more that they can save. If Deputy Ferris's bill becomes law, older people who are willing and able to work would be able to do so. It would eliminate the growing problem of older people who are forced into retirement at 65 or even earlier, but with years to go before they can claim the state pension. Like everyone else, we welcome the continuing fall that has taken place in unemployment figures, but while there are schemes and programmes to help young people find work, what is there for a forklift driver forced out of his job at 55 or a civil servant pushed aside on her 65th birthday? Older people frequently tell us that they feel invisible, that they feel undervalued. They see the media refer to them as bed blockers or as a burden on society. Against this backdrop, you would very, you need to be very determined to go job hunting as an older worker. With people retiring today expected to live on average 20 years or more, we need to have an honest debate about the role of older workers in Irish society, the kind of honest debate that led four years ago to the abolition of the default retirement age in Britain. The abolition of mandatory retirement in Britain was no less challenging or difficult or controversial than it would be here in Ireland, but the political will was there, the recognition of the rights of older people was there, and the understanding that older people had something to contribute to their communities and to the economy was there. It can be done, and as the demographics change in Ireland in the coming years, it will be done, and there should be no doubt about this, Mandatory retirement ages are going to be abolished in this country. So why not now? Why not today? I'd like to ask my colleague, Ms Angela Gallagher, to add a few words of her own on her personal experience of mandatory retirement. I'm delighted to be here this afternoon and to have the opportunity to discuss the issue of mandatory retirement. I appreciate that the issue and its implications for employment law, for pensions policy and lots of other areas is very complex. But I believe at the same time it is also very simple. 
People should not be forced out of their jobs because they are a certain age. If we accept that basic principle, I believe we can overcome the complicated policy issues, issues thrown up by abolishing mandatory retirement. People like me, who are able to work and willing to work and are capable of doing our jobs effectively, should not be forced to retire because of our age. To me, this is simply ageism, discrimination against me and thousands of people in Ireland, like me, who are deemed expendable. In my own case, the frustration of losing my job for no other reason sorry, than because I had turned 65 was exacerbated by the financial hardship this policy of mandatory retirement inflicted on me. I was trying to pay a mortgage to the bank and a loan to the credit union at the same time. It was extremely difficult to keep going. I had to cut right back. I had to get rid of my telephone, get rid of my television and anything I could do to save money. I even had to cut back on my medication a couple of times because my meds cost the maximum per month under the drug scheme and I simply could not afford it. There were weeks and months when I didn't know how I was going to pay the bank when I worried whether I would even be able to keep my home. The thing that annoys me the most, the reason I came here today, is that none of this was necessary. I wanted to work, I was able to work, I liked what I was doing and I was good at my job. If I hadn't been forced out of my job, I would have been able to work until I was secure. And I would also have been able to keep contributing to the economy. I would urge the committee members to recognise that older workers, what older workers have to offer, the skills, the experience and the wisdom we have built up in our careers. I would like to strongly support the legislation being proposed by Deputy Ferris and would like to thank the committee for their attention. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate that. Uh, now we move